thanks, Noob Noob. This guy gets it. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 savage Rick Sanchez comebacks. Hey, I'll take it over Mumford and Sons. Zip. <laughs> this guy is on it. We'll be looking at some of the best burns that Rick Sanchez has ever uttered during Rick and Morty. What's your favorite Rick burn? Let us know below. Number 10, Whitewash. With the team on a Mad Max-like post-apocalyptic desert world looking for Isotope 322, as well as dealing with Summer going native, Rick decides to use Morty in some fights. I need you to distract the camp. Distract? They eat each other. What, what do you want me to do to get their attention? Put on a puppet show? Right idea. Wrong genre, Morty. When he points out the structure and asks the locals about the Dunderdrome, one responds by giving its real name, the Blood Dome. Hey, you guys ever use that Thunderdome, or do you just put it up for decoration? Uh, you mean the Blood Dome? With the pointless correction, Rick retorts that the guy should save it for the Semantic Dome, then calls him E.B. White. This brings a burn from the crowd, followed by a finger snap and wink from Rick. Save it for the Semantics Dome, E.B. White. Ooh, burn. White was an author who contributed to the book The Elements of Style, which basically outlined American writing rules. Writing nerd fans of the show were pretty delighted with this obscure reference. Number 9. Patronizing Purge After squishing a space bug on the ship's windscreen and grossly smearing it all over the glass, Rick and Morty land on a nearby, seemingly low-tech cowboy planet to fill up on some wiper fluid. Yeah, I guess I'm out of fluid. Uh, let me find a place to stop. To hurry things on, Rick speaks to a local. Instead of being sensitive and careful, he flat out asks the resident if this world has wiper fluid or if he's going to freak out and worship them. Does your planet have wiper fluid yet or are you going to freak out and start worshiping us? But the old guy takes it in stride. With Rick's advanced technology, it wouldn't be too surprising for the locals to get confused. Yet, then again, they were all excited for the Purge Festival. Th that's horrible! Yeah. You want to check it out? So, worshipping strangers is probably pretty low on the locals' to-do list. Number 8. Robbery Rick As soon as this episode opens, you already know shenanigans are going to happen. The duo of Rick and Morty arrive at the National Library of the United States. Wait, are we going to put it back when we're done with it? Why? The only thing of value on it is the secret treasure map. The rest is just instructions for running a country, and I'm pretty sure they're online. After some chit-chat that sounds a lot like the plot of 2004's National Treasure film, Morty has some reservations about the plan. Well, that's when Rick questions him if he's going to be an American nerd or be cool and steal the Constitution with Grandpa. Morty, are you going to be a f***ing American nerd or are you going to be cool and steal the Constitution with Grandpa? Ah, good old peer pressure. To make it worse, just as they're about to break into the glass, Morty accidentally sets off the laser. It burns a hole through the Constitution, Abraham Lincoln's statue head, and the Liberty Bell. It also releases the robot assassin under the Statue of Liberty. Whoops. Morty, you just destroyed the map and activated the giant assassin hidden in the Statue of Liberty. I'm sorry. Number seven, Authority Rick. With the host of Ricks being assassinated in their own timelines and their Mortys being kidnapped, our Rick, C-137, is arrested by minions, or Rickians, if you like, of the Transdimensional Council of Ricks. Let's get it over with. Bring his <coughs> Morty. Oh. Leave my Morty out of this. You lost the right to have a say in these things when you refused to jo uh, join the council. After getting a glimpse of the Citadel, the duo is taken to the higher-ups to answer for the crimes. As Rick hates them all, he's suspect number one. You think I did this? Why am I the first Rick you pull in every time a Rick stubs his toe? He defends himself by mocking them from wanting to be safe from the government by becoming a government, making every Rick involved less Rick than him. I'm the Rick, and so were the rest of you before you formed this stupid alliance. You wanted to be safe from the government, so you became a stupid government. That makes every Rick here less Rick than me. Oh, yeah, murmur it up, D-bags. Which, of course, sparks a load of annoyed mummers and doesn't exactly make his case look good. But C-137 wouldn't allow the possibility of a sick burn to go unsaid. Number 6. That Kinda Day 
With an episode about the morals of supplying weapons to assassins, Morty saves Fart and causes one problem after another. Any species that gets a hold of this thing is gonna use it to take over the galaxy. You know how inconvenient that's gonna be to my work? So, does Rick grow as a grandparent and lovingly teach Morty the ways of the world without a nihilistic approach? No, definitely not. After witnessing Fart cause a massive amount of slaying, they head off to the wormhole to take Fart home. That's when Rick states he's off to do a I'm gonna find some fuel and take a big fat Morty. His new word for laying a brick, for cutting rope, for releasing the Kraken, you get it. Anywho, Rick decides to name this activity after Morty due to the day's horrendous events. He really enjoys kicking Morty when he's down. Well, I got a little surprise for you, buddy. While you were gone, I found a new wormhole with millions of beings just like him on the other side, and they're all coming to visit. What? Rick, no, you can't! Too late, Morty, the hole's opening. No, no Rick, you don't understand! Number 5. Superhero Slam The show decided to parody superhero cinema in the Vindicators 3 The Return of World Ender episode. And it was glorious. Rick is forced to go on a trip to help the Vindicators, who he has very little respect for. There are a bunch of drama queens that spend an hour talking and 20 minutes jumping around while shit blows up. They're a phase. As the heroes are holding a briefing for their mission, Rick spends the time cutting in with sassy insults whenever possible. His major target was Crocubot when he asked if its origin story was falling into a vat of redundancy, which causes Noob Noob great happiness as he cleans. So, you're half cold, unfeeling reptile, half also cold, equally unfeeling machine. Yes. Wow. So, your origin is what? You, you, you fell into a vat of redundancy? <laughs> God damn! Later on, Rick aims at million ants. After finding World Ender with fatal injuries, Million Ant states he can feel his life force ending. Rick mocks his observation by proclaiming he has the power of two human eyes. I sense his life force is fading. Million Ants, ladies and gentlemen, the ant colony with the power of two human eyes. Number 4. Alien Dressdown After undergoing a quick 20-minute adventure that lasted for six terrifying days, Rick and Morty decided to have a long overdue vacation. Why do you keep doing this to us? I don't know, Morty. Maybe I hate myself. Maybe I think I deserve to die. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> we need a vacation. During their quest for relaxation, they're regurgitated by a creature and covered in its goo. They're also offered to get a psychological detox by an alien employee. Finding the worker a little pushy, Rick loses it with him and lets loose. Complimentary psychological detox removes all your cognitive toxins, <coughs> purifies your system. Ooh, this guy in commission or something? He slates the alien speech by demanding it to try swallowing the giant ball of snot in the back of its throat. Rick then furthers the point by saying it's disgusting and sarcastically clears his throat to show it what to do. I'd like you to try something. Try swallowing the giant ball of snot that's dangling around in the back of your throat. It's disgusting. Nobody wants to hear that. <clears throat> Uh -uh, that's what you do. Okay. But considering Rick usually throws in a burp here and there when he talks, kettle meets pot. Number 3. Grandchildren Pain After freezing time in one finale, the following season kicks off with time restarting and then breaking. Our time's gonna need a little time to, you know, stabilize. Our time is gonna be unstable? What does that even mean? Morty and Summer argue, creating a feedback loop and fragmenting time with plenty of Schrodinger's cat references. So, with Morty and Summer hindered by uncertainty, Rick decides to put them in their place. He sits them down and lectures them on just how little they mean to him. And as far as Grandpa's concerned, you're both pieces of shit. Yeah, I can prove it mathematically. Actually, let me grab my whiteboard. This has been a long time coming anyway. It's touching, really. A particular highlight is calling the siblings clingy, hysterical, bird-brained homunculi before making sure they know their place in his world. After his devastating rant and the belief that the lecture sorted the problem, Rick was very annoyed to discover that it didn't fix the problem. And you got something to say? Away we go. And away we go. Making that mean speech pretty much pointless, but amazing. Number two, Gene Slap. Jerry has always been a prime target for Rick's scorn, sometimes for good reasons, but other times just for fun. 
In the opening for Total Rickall, we have the Smith family, plus Uncle Steve, having a meal. Steve, you're so sweet. Thanks, Uncle Steve. Best uncle ever. Look out, world. The Smith family is going to Paris. When Rick comes in and dumps some rocks in the trash, Jerry responds by stating he doesn't like that. So Rick retorts devastatingly by saying, Well, I don't like your unemployed jeans and my grandchildren, Jerry, but life is made of little concessions. <laughs> Yikes. Since Jerry struggles to respond, Steve is there to pick his brother up, until Rick shoots him in the head. But fear not, Steve was just a telepathic alien parasite that messes with people's memories. That is an alien parasite. <gasps> but I've known him my whole life. No you haven't, Jerry. These telepathic little bastards, they embed themselves in memories and then they use those to multiply and spread out and take over planets. It's, it's disgusting. Side note, Marvel should get working on that Hulk musical as it would be a smash hit. Sorry. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, tough crowd. If you like heist films, then this episode might not be for you with all the relentless mocking of the genre. Kicking things off, Rick and Morty get inside HeistCon to face off with alien Freddie Mercury, sorry, Miles Knightley. And then the police stole the paintings. Because the police were us in police outfits. Thank you. With Rick's lack of respect for Heist, the crowd quickly turns on him and boos. And with that, a million memes were born. Rick insults them by saying, Your booze mean nothing, I've seen what makes you cheer. Once he slates Ocean's 12 and gets more heckling, Rick exclaims, Every breath I take without your permission raises my self-esteem. Rick probably won't ever be asked to host a panel at HeistCon anytime soon, especially after mind controlling everyone and creating Heistotron. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.